It's safe to say that in management, there is a definite correlation between war tactics and leadership. In both, you have to control and make decisions. And with war tactics, you have to lead an army as a general, which is very similar to being a manager. You have your soldiers you have to look after and guide, just as managers have to look after their employees. Same thing with leadership and being a leader for a country. Same thing with your citizens and like your employees. You have to treat your employees as a leader would treat their citizens. These are the ideals of Machiavelli and Chen Tzu compared to management. Strategy is a key element in business. Sun Chu em emphasizes on strategy in his book, The Art of War. He says to plan for the unexpected. In management, things happen where it doesn't always go as planned. It's just inevitable. And this happened in war as well. You have to always have a backup plan for anything that can happen. Things go wrong, you have to know a solution right away. Because sometimes it could be at a timely manner. You always have to have a backup plan. Always. On the topic of strategy, Machiavelli, Machiavelli speaks about strategy as well. He speaks about innovation. You should always look to make things better. Even if they're okay the way they are, you should always look to make things better. That is about innovation and making things better even though they work. You know, you have to revolutionize. And to keep the best interest of a country, Machiavelli says, you should do anything that is necessary, by any means, even if it's immoral. As long as you're doing it for the right purposes and for the best intention of the country, as a manager do with, as a manager would do for their business, it's okay. It's justifiable. Also, competition is inevitable. There's, there's other companies that are going to be like yours and as a manager you have to compete you have to make sure that the company's at the top of his game and all your employees are working the hardest you have to look in the market and understand who your competition is you have to analyze what they do and the decisions they make and you have to be ready for any decision they could make. Shan Chu says to attack the enemy with profit. This way, when they see that you're gaining momentum really fast in the market, they feel obliged to want to strike back at you. They don't want you to get too far into the market because then it's harder for them to win you over. So. They, they, they will make a rash decision, such as like making a new product or a new marketing campaign that most likely won't work out well because they rushed it, because they don't want you to gain momentum. This is a strategy that Sun Tzu uses in war. He uses his profits in his country to attract the enemy. So they, they use greed, like they don't want him to get any stronger than he already is, so they rush fast. And at the end of the day, it's just a tactic. That way, they fail at it, and you, you can use that to your advantage. It works both ways in business and in war. Machiavelli says that you need to crush the competition. You can't isolate yourself, because that's only going to do worse. It's good to make acquaintances, get to know people, and pitch yourself out there. That way you know more about your enemy and who you're working with as you would with your competition in businesses. You know how they manage, you know their strategies, that way you know how to make yours. As a manager, you always have to have a strong stance. And you have to have a good balance between love and fear, which is highly controversial. Because it's complicated to have both a good relationship and like have that sternness with your employees but Ma as Machiavelli says if necessary it's better to lean towards fear because at the end of the day at the end of the day fear is gonna get your employees where they need to be because they're afraid of getting fired or penalized because they don't want that but Machiavelli also makes sure make sure to say that don't 
put too much fear out there. You have to make sure that it's like a respectable fear and not a hatred fear. Because then, like, they'll do things behind your back and you, you just want to have a good stance. You don't want people to hate you. People may take advantage of that, you know, kindness. If you're too good to people and, like, they'll step over you. They'll try to step over the boundaries between friendship and business. And that just complicates business because friendship can't be intervened. You know, you can't do favors. That business is business. It's about maximizing efficiency. In management, you also have to show effort and determination. This is very important because as a manager, who like your representation upon the company reflects your employees. If your employees see that you're working hard and like you're really determined for the well-being of the company and the well-being of all your employees, then they're going to respect that and they're going to want to work hard for it. Machiavelli says how as long as you give a person general respect, and like, you know, you don't pit them down, you don't mess with their honor, then everything should go smoothly. You don't ever want to abuse your power and like get arrogant, as Sun Shu says. You always want to stay humble because that's the, that's the trait of a good leader because you have the strategy, you have the potential to be a good manager, but you don't abuse your power, you don't get arrogant and cocky just because you're the head of many employees. It's a, it's a team effort. You're just a leader. You just have to make sure everybody's doing what they're doing. And you have to make sure there's a mutual respect. Yeah, they have to respect you as a manager. You're their boss. But you have to respect them as your employees. They, they work for you. So how you treat them reflects how they work. So there has to be a mutual respect there. That's really important. And the more ge genuine your efforts are in the company and your efforts are for their, their well-being the more harder they're going to work for you. Like, if they want to ever have a change in schedule or anything like that, you have to, like, don't just blow it off like, I don't care, like, he's going to have to work that day or whatever. Like, you have to put the effort in, and they're going to acknowledge and respect that. And they're going to want to work hard and prove themselves for you actually caring and putting the effort in. <laughs> but, yeah. To win in competition, as Sun Sun Chu says, you have to know yourself and know the competition. So yeah, it's good to know the competition and it's good to get to know them and all. But you also have to know yourself. Like you have to know your workers as like what I was saying with the mutual respect thing. You have to know that they're there for you. You have to know that they're there to work hard and to crush the competition with you. You can have the good intention of winning a war between another company and your and your own to surpass them in the market and you know and to gain greater profits and most of the target audience. However, that intention means nothing without the employees under you having your back. So they have to respect you and want to work hard for you if you want ever want to win that so to speak war with another company with your enemy company because at the end of the day like I was saying you're the leader but it is a team effort everybody has to do their part and as long as everybody works efficiently as long as you manage efficiently and you make sure everything's going smoothly and you put that effort in everything's gonna go smoothly you have to strategize you have to manage your employees well treat them well have a mutual respect and always be prepared for the unexpected and that's those are traits that make a good manager and those are some ideals that Machiavelli and Chen Shu both reflect in their novels The Art of War and The Prince that can highly be relevant to business and business aspects especially as managers.